Sophie's Adventures. Sophie Snell, one very small foot. What animal has got only one foot? said the children's father. I bet you can't tell me. I can, said Matthew and Mark with one voice. As well as looking exactly alike, the twins nearly always said exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. Matthew was ten minutes older than Mark, but after that there had never been the slightest difference between them. Go on then, said their father. Tell me, what animals got only one foot? A chicken standing on one leg, they said. That's silly, said Sophie seriously. <clears throat> Sophie was four, a couple of years younger than her brothers. That's silly, she said. It would still have a foot on the other leg. Anyway, Daddy, there really, there isn't really any an an animal that's only got one foot, is there? Yes, there is, Sophie. What? A snail. Every snail has a big, flat, sticky muscle under it that it travels along on. That's called its foot. Next time you see a snail crawling along, pick it up carefully and turn it over, and you'll see there are lots in the garden. Come on, let's find one, said Matthew to Mark and Mark to Matthew at the same time. Wait for me, said Sophie, but they didn't saw the product after them. When she caught up with the twins in the far corner of the garden, each was examining the underside of a large snail. Sophie was not surprised to see that the snails were also obviously twins. The same size, the same shape, the same striped greeny browny color. I know, said Matthew. I know what you're going to say, said Mark. Let's have a snail rest, they said. How are you going to tell them apart, said Sophie. I know, said Mark. I know what you're going to say, said Matthew. Fetch us a felt pen, Sophie, they said. What are you going to do? asked Sophie when she came back with a red felt pen. Put my initial on my snail, said Mark and Matthew together. But you've got the same initial. The boys looked at each other. I know, they said. I know what you're going to say, said Sophie, and she pulled it off again. She came back with a blue felt pen. Felt pen. After a moment, ready, said Matthew, holding out his snail with a big red M on his shell. And at the same instant, ready, said Mark, holding out his snail with a big blue M. Wait for me, said Sophie. I haven't got a snail yet. But already the twins had set the twin cells side by side on the path that ran between the edge of the lawn and the flower bed. The path was made of big oval flat stones, and they chose the largest one, perhaps a meter long. The far end of the flat stone was to be the wheeling horse. <coughs> Ready, steady, go! They shouted. Sophie plodded off. I'll beat them, she said. She was small but very determined. Behind the first door, she moved almost as though it had been waiting for her was a snail. It was as different as possible from red M and blue M. It was very little, no bigger than Sophie's middle finger now, and it was a lovely buttercup yellow. As she watched it, it stretched out its head, poked out its two horns, and began to crawl very slowly. It had a most intelligent face, Sophie thought she picked it up carefully and turned it over. What a very small size shoe you would take, my dear, she said. I don't know whether you can win a rest. But you are very beautiful. You shall be my snail. Who won? She said to Matthew and Mark when she returned. They didn't go the right way, they both said. But mine went further, they both said. No, it didn't, they both said. They picked up their snails and put them side by side once more. Wait for me, Sophie said, and she put down the little yellow snail. It looked very small beside the others. Just look at Sophie's snail, hooted the twins, but this time when they shouted, Ready, steady, go, 
neither red M nor blue M would move. They sat stubbornly inside their shelves and took not the slightest notice of the owner's cries of encouragement. Sophie's now plodded off. It was small but very determined. And Sophie lay on the grass beside the path and watched it, putting its best foot forward. After an hour, it reached the winning pond. Sophie jumped out. Mine's the winner! She cried, but there was no one to hear. The twins had become bored with snail racing at exactly the same time and gone away. Red M and Blue M had gone away too into the forest of the flower bed. Only Sophie's snail kept stoutly on while the stretched silvery trail it has left glistered in the sunshine. Sophie knelt down and carefully put her hand flat in front of the little yellow creature. It crawled solemnly onto it. You have such an intelligent look, my dear, said Sophie. What have you got in your hand, Sophie? said her mother at tea time. It's Sophie's now, chorus Matthew and Mark. Put it straight down in the garden, said the children, smiling. No, said Sophie in a small but determined voice. Her mother looked at her side, picked up a box of matches, emptied the matches, and gave Sophie the empty box. Put it in there till after tea, she said, and go and wash your hands. All the evening, Sophie played with her snail. When it was bedtime and she was ready to wash and do her teeth, she put the snail carefully on the flat rim of the wash basin. That, as she always did, she filled the basin with warm water right up to the overflow and washed her face and hands. The snail did not move though it appeared to be watching. Then, as she always did, she brushed her teeth very hard, making a lot of froth in her mouth and spitting the bubbly blocks of toothpaste out on top of the rather dirty water. She always liked doing this. The toothpaste blocks met strange shapes on the surface of the water, often like a map of the world. Tonight, there was a big white Africa on one side of the basin. Then, as she always did, she put the plug out, but as she turned to dry her hands and the sleeve of her dressing gown, scuffed the rim of the basin. Right into the middle of disappearing Africa fell a small yellow shed, and then the last of the world pulling floating water disappeared down the plug hole, leaving the basin quite empty. Sophie plodded down the stairs. My snail's gone down the plug hole, she said in a very quiet voice. You couldn't have kept it, you know, said her father gently. It would have died anyway without its natural food. Next time you find one, said her mother, just leave it in the garden. There are lots of other snails there just as nice. Not as nice as my snail, said Sophie. She looked so unhappy that for once, the twins said different things in an effort to comfort her. Spike it died quickly, said Matthew, sure to be drowned by now, said Mark. Try as she would, Sophie could not stop herself thinking about what happened to you if you went down a plug hole. She lay in bed and thought about the twins washing their hands in the basin and washing their teeth and then let her own mom and dad doing the same. All that water would be washing the body of her snail farther and farther away, down the drain into the sewer, down the sewer into the river, down the river into the sea. When at last she slept, she dreamt that she was walking by the seaside and there she saw, washed up on the beach, a familiar little yellow shirt. But when she ran and picked it up, it had no head, no horns, no foot. It was just an empty snail shell. Sophie woke early with the feeling that something awful had happened, and then she remembered what it was. She plodded along to the bathroom and looked over the rim of the wash basin at the round plug hole with its metal grating, meant to stop things going down it. But you were too little, she said, leaning over as far as she could reach. She stared sadly into the black depths of the plug hole. And as she stared, suddenly, two little horns popped up through the grating, and then a head, and then a shell no bigger than her middle finger down, a shell that was a lovely buttercup yellow. 
Very carefully, Sophie reached out and picked up her small determined snail. Very quietly, she plodded down the stairs and opened the back door and went out into the garden across the dewy lawn. Very gently, at the exact spot she had found it, she put her snail down and watched it slowly move away on its very small foot. Goodbye, my dear, said Sophie. I hope we meet again. And then she sat happily on the wet grass, watching till at last there was nothing more to be seen of Sophie's snail.